This video is actually part of a series of lectures that are in a class entitled the MBTI Learning Styles, the 16 Personalities. You can access this course at udemy.com, teachable.com, or thinkific.com. You can also find more information at studentsuccessspace.com, which is our website, and the information is in printed format on Amazon in both a paperback and Kindle versions. So an ENTP is the other extroverted part of the personality within this visioning or thinking plus thinking pair. Now they are someone who's an agent of change. They like vision, they value logic, argument, competence, and independence. As you look at an ENTP, you're gonna see that they're quick, they're ingenuous, they're stimulating, they're alert, they're outspoken, they're resourceful, they're adept at generalizing or generating possibilities and analyzing strategically. They're also good at reading other people. I think that's fascinating because they're very good at reading other people. They're bored by routine. So don't expect them to do anything that is part of a routine. One of my favorite ways to describe these people is personable, perceptive, and persuasive. Great persuaders. So 3.2% of the population is an ENTP, but you're gonna notice that they're mostly males. Their keywords are both innovative and active. This is because they're curious and creative. That's part of that innovative piece. And they like to answer the question of, in what ways can the given problem be solved? ENFPs are a phenomenal learner and they're a lot of fun to be around. One of my favorite things to do to remember this type of learner is that uh, not only are they very quick to give affirmations and compliments, but they really need them as well. They seek for affirmation. They are clever and they're creative and they're imaginative and they easily grasp and see information from many different angles. And because of that, they like to be challenged, especially with complex materials and concepts and they enjoy finding a practical application for them. They're flexible learners, but they're also very, very restless. They need a lot of stimulation. They need a lot of ideas, theory, inspirations. They need to move a lot. So remember that you need to really provide them with a cooperative and supportive environment that's gonna give them some flexibility to get up and to be moving. So when we look at this kind of a learner, remember that they like that fast paced interactive environment and they need a lot of change. So they can learn independently, but they prefer interactive, meaning that it's okay if you leave them for a little while to work independently, but they're really going to learn better and more efficiently if they are in a place that they can interact with other learners. They also need some applications. Give them application to the information. And if you give them some loose structure around some application or some loose structure in an environment, then they're going to really be able to find solutions. And the classroom needs to be very flexible. So anything that's going to have rows, straight rows, and assume that they need to be in a certain place at a certain time is not going to be very conducive or very welcoming for this kind of learner. They need innovative approaches for learning, like discussions, especially open-ended discussions, and they really don't mind debating very much. They're actually very good at debating because they have an ability to focus on information for long periods of time. So let's look at some of the ways in which they are most comfortable and least comfortable. They like unstructured areas, study groups, active learning, physically active, center of attention. They like that learning theory, but they can also really concept general or grasp general concepts very quickly. They do enjoy both competition and collaboration. So when you do this, or when you organize competition, also make sure that you have some collaboration or you bring things around to a great end. They love diverse learning activities and especially opportunities to really probe and to investigate questions. They want to find answers. Now they're going to be in areas where they're going to be least comfortable. It's just the way that it is because we tend to have very rigid planning and structured classrooms. And because of that, that creates a very uncomfortable situation for these learners. And when they are in that kind of a situation, they're really going to be more difficult to deal with. They become scatterbrained, they have trouble focusing, and they even become extremely and very easily distracted. One of the biggest problems with 
putting them in an uncomfortable learning situation is that they have a difficulty following through or making decisions. They even may seem rebellious at times, and because of that, they'll ignore all deadlines and procedures. When you run into these kind of situations with a learner, kind of look and see what you can do to really ease up that learning environment and make it more conducive for learning for them. Let's look at some teaching tips. Remember, these are active learners which are very flexible and the greatest need that they have is activity through a variety of instructional methodologies. They need a lot of options. Use some modeling, use examples, use exploratory learning, but also make sure that you give them enough time that they can really get their hands dirty and practice and to solve those problems. Because remember, they love this stuff. This is something that really in, uh, energizes them because they like to be able to have insights into possibilities of others and energy and motivation will really help them build more energy. They will feel confident moving ahead on their insights. It's spectacular to really see this happen for these kind of a learners. Make sure that you have a question and answer time for them and encourage them to really create more questions while they're studying. Also, help them to really do some scaffolding. Because they're quick learners, sometimes they tend to move through information very quickly without really scaffolding the information into existing schemas. And they also need space to physically move. Don't forget to give them that physical space. Let's look at how they're innovative and creative. So as a learner, being innovative and creative is really exciting, but it also means that you need to kind of pull it back in sometimes. So be sure that you feed your innovation and your creativity, but find ways that you can learn those monotonous kind of things in very unconventional situations and by unconventional means. Meaning that if you have something that's typically done through rote memorization, maybe there's a more innovative way to approach it. Create questions and think of things that you can ask before you attend class. Be sure to meet with your teachers and ask them if there might be an opportunity for them to put a Q&A part during their class time. And most teachers would be more than happy to do so. Create as many connections as you can between the material and what you already know. And some ideas to use to do that might be graphic organizers and brainstorming, even mind mapping really aids in that aspect. Be sure that you preview those materials, all materials before you go to class and look for some practical real world applications. Remember also that you want to create a repertoire of all kinds of techniques that you really enjoy while studying. And these will be your most effective, efficient ways that you can learn. You wanna create a list of those so that you can quickly jump back to them when you are struggling, like you're staring at that blank page for a paper to write. If you have those quick tips, that's gonna help you to really encourage your curiosity and your imagination and to be able to open doors into your learning.